Good morning, friends. I'm starting in the back as our baptismal font is back here so that it's uh, accessible for folks. And I go from the announcements right into Thanksgiving for baptism. So this saves me some uh, awkward in between time. Um, so you are welcome to turn around as you are able, or I am perfectly happy to look at the back of your heads. That's wonderful. Um, so just a couple of notes for us this morning. First of all, um, as many of you may be aware, Anita is still out of the office. So she'll be out of the office until Thursday. So I, uh, there is an update of what the office hours will look like this week, because I know I have some meetings coming up, so I'll know when I'll be out of the office. That was sent out in the midweek blast, and it's, there are hard copies of that available on the table in the narthex, so that you have that information. Please just call the office before you come, just to ensure that I am for sure here and haven't been called out on a pastoral emergency. Um, fortunately, that doesn't happen too often, but it, it does happen. So, um, secondly, if you um, purchased an Easter lily and would like to take one home with you, we would love for those to go home with you rather than um, slowly become a little, little less uh, resurrected here. Um, <laughs> So, I don't know, it feels weird to talk about that, you know, <laughs> resurrection and all that. So if you do that, and if you didn't purchase one and would like one, please let me know. I am almost certain we will have many leftovers, and I'd be very happy for these to go to someone's home again. Otherwise, they will be returned to God's earth. With that, dear friends, I do invite you to rise as you are able <laughs> as we continue with our Thanksgiving for baptism. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, by whose hand we are given new birth, by whose speaking we are given new life. Amen. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are welcomed, restored, and supported as citizens of the new creation. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. Holy God, holy and merciful, holy and mighty, <coughs> You are the river of life. You are the everlasting wellspring. In mercy and might, you have freed us from death and raised us with Jesus, the firstborn of the dead. In baptismal waters, our old life is washed away, and in them we are born anew. Glory to you for oceans and lakes, for rivers and streams. Honor to you for waters that wash us clean, quench our thirst, and nurture both crops and creatures. Praise to you for the life-giving nature, water of baptism, the outpouring of the spirits of the new creation. Wash away our sin and all that separates us from you. Empower our witness to your resurrection. Strengthen our resolve in seeking justice for all. Satisfy the world's need through this living water. Where drought dries the earth, bring refreshment. Where despair prevails, grant hope. Where chaos reigns, bring peace. We ask this through Christ, who with you and the Spirit reigns forever. Amen. We remain standing as we sing our opening hymn, 363. You're welcome to uh, face forward again. <laughs>
the Lord. Please join me in singing Psalm 16 responsibly. <clears throat> Showed them his hands and his side. 
that the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. <laughs> Beloved of God, grace and peace to you in the name of the Holy Risen One. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Okay. I'm a good job. The tomb is empty. The messengers from God have appeared. And Mary has proclaimed to the disciples that she has seen the Lord. Christ is risen, so now what? It's a question for both the disciples and us. When we join them today, the disciples still don't know what is exactly going on, except that for them, three days ago, they witnessed the brutal execution of their friend and rabbi and lord. And now they have reports that he is alive again. Or, well, He's at least not in the tomb where Joseph of Arimathea laid him. So they decide that the best course of action is just to lay low for a little while. And so on that Sunday evening, we find them gathered together in fear and uncertainty behind locked doors. They were afraid that what happened to Jesus could happen to them. And in the midst of their fear and uncertainty, Jesus appears, saying peace to the very startled disciples. Can you just imagine all of them sitting there completely in shock, right? The doors, first of all, are locked. So how did this fella get in there? And they might have a guess as to who he is, but they do not immediately recognize Jesus as Jesus until they see the marks in his hands and the mark in his side. It is then that the disciples seeing Jesus rejoice, for Jesus is the one who is among them. But the question still hovers, now what? Now that the disciples recognize him, Jesus can answer this question. He gives them the gift of peace, saying, The Father has sent me, so I send you. And he breathes on them, just as God breathed into Adam at creation. It's the same word. They, they, there's the Hebrew and there's the Greek, but they are the 
the same, they mean the same thing. It is God's breath, God's spirit, that Jesus breathes onto them and tells them that they are to continue his work. Right? The work of bearing witness to what is possible in our relationship between us and God. A relationship that Jesus showed them with his life, a relationship they are to show others with their lives. So now the disciples know what they are supposed to do next, and it's not too long before they get to try out their new role of bearing witness, right? It turns out that Thomas, one of their own, was not with them when Jesus came to them. But he was a follower of Jesus, so he should be a pretty easy sell, right? So echoing Mary, who that morning had told them that she and the others had seen the Lord, they proclaimed to Thomas, we've seen the Lord. And Thomas responds, unless I see the marks on his hand for myself, I will not believe. Now, we don't get the disciples' reaction to his pronouncement, but I've got to think that that took the wind right out of their sails. Because where do we find them the next time we see them? Right? Where are they? Are they out in the world continuing Jesus' work? No. They are in the same house, in the same room, with the door shut. The only difference now is that Thomas is with them this time. And once again, Jesus appears among them and greets them with peace. Then he turns and offers himself to Thomas, saying, Put your fingers here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. Now when we hear these words, sometimes they can be said with a bit of a mocking or judgmental tone to them, right? Indeed, we've added the epithet doubting to Thomas's name, but there is no reason to interpret Jesus' words and actions as anything but filled with grace. Jesus is offering Thomas what he needs and encouraging him farther down the path of faith. Each of us has different needs when it comes to faith. Peter and the other disciples, all they needed was to see the linen wrappings lying in the tomb. Mary needed to hear her name spoken by Jesus. Some of the disciples believed when Mary announced to them that she had seen the Lord. And Thomas, he needed to put his finger in Jesus' hands and his hands in his side to know that it wasn't a trick, to know that it was real. And having been given what he needs, Thomas believes, right? He confesses his faith, my Lord and my God. And with that goes a step further than the rest of the disciples in his faith. He grasps the nature of the special relationship between Jesus and his Abba, a relationship that the author of John's Gospel has been proclaiming from the very beginning. Right? In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. Thomas gets it. Have you believed because you have seen me? Jesus asks. Knowing full, full well that it is what Thomas requested. But then he goes on, seeming to kind of turn to us, to his future audience, and says, Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Again, I don't think that there is judgment in those tones. We, we put judgment in there. We read it like that. I know that I have myself. But Thomas is blessed with his faith through sight, and those who believe without seeing Jesus are also blessed. It is a both-and situation, which is my favorite, favorite part of our theological tradition. We are blessed by our belief, not by how we come to it. There is no greater blessing than being in relationship with Jesus, with God, full stop. And having recorded Jesus' benediction, 
John, the author, turns once again to us, the readers, throughout the ages, the millennia, and says, Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. And once again, the ball is back in our courts. The tomb is empty. Mary has delivered her message to these skeptical disciples. Jesus has appeared to the disciples throughout through locked doors, given them the gift of the Holy Spirit, and ascended to his Abba. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Now what? The end of Jesus' story is the beginning of ours. At our baptisms, we were given the gift of the Holy Spirit and commissioned to continue his work in this world. So just as Jesus gave the disciples the gift of the Holy Spirit and commissioned them to continue his work in the world, we, too, are called to witness to the life-giving nature of relationship with God, all while walking our own path from unbelief to belief. Simple enough, right? Well, hardly, because no sooner than we excitedly proclaim we've seen the Lord, we will meet a Thomas who demands proof that we ourselves cannot provide. And before we know it, we're back in the room with the others who are just like us, with the door shut, wondering what to do. And that's when Jesus comes to us in grace, offering himself to us again and again, as many times as it takes, offering himself to us and as when we are by ourselves and when we are gathered with fellow disciples, where we listen to the stories of the signs that Jesus did, stories that point to a truth greater than the stories themselves, a truth greater than us. And together we share our own experiences with the risen Lord. They might not be as dramatic. Some of us do have very dramatic faith stories, and others of us have just wonderful everyday stories. We all have had encounters with the Holy, whether he has sailed through locked doors or whether he meets us out in the open. We meet God in any and all ways because God shows up to us every time we need him. And maybe, maybe some of us are still like Thomas, waiting for what we need to believe. But in the meantime, our community holds our faith in trust. We come together wondering what to do. We share stories. We sing songs, we offer prayers, and then we gather as a community around the table, and Jesus comes to us proclaiming, peace be with you, and offering us his body and blood, giving us what we need, and we reach out and we receive what was given for us. Then blessing us, Jesus sends us back out back out into the world to share the gift of the Holy Spirit, to forgive and receive forgiveness, to live fully in Jesus' name, to excitedly proclaim, we have seen the Lord. Alleluia. to hymn number 390, and so please rise as you are able for our hymn of the day.
faith together in the words of the Apostle Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. United in the hope of hope and joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God of rebirth, the good news of your resurrection brings refreshment to a weary world. Following your women at the tomb, empower us to boldly share your radical love through our words and our work. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. As you breathe your spirit into the disciples, breathe your spirit of healing among all creation. Nourish the earth with sufficient rains. Strengthen us to encounter the effects of pollution and destruction. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You prepared the disciples for their ministry by calming their fears and granting them your peace. Equip our community's leaders. Give them a spirit of peace and hearts that burn for justice, that their leadership reflects your law. <coughs> Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy, your mercy is great. great. You come among us in unexpected ways. Send us to those who hide in fear or question your love. Be a healing presence for any isolated by addiction, incarceration, mental illness, chronic pain, sickness, or grief. We pray especially for healing for Tim Anderson and for John Verniason. We also pray especially for Diane as she nears her life's end and for Karen who is with her support. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. As you met the disciples on the road to Emmaus, show us your presence among our journeys. Bless our doubts and questions. Provide trusting and safe relationships for all ages to nurture our connection to you and one another. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Resurrecting God, you bring us to new life every day. Thank you for blessing us with companions on, on our faith journey, especially those who now rest in your love. Strengthen us with the eternal peace of your promises. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, Almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. I invite you to share a sign of that peace with one another.
all the ways in which we give, let us pray. Generous God, in this meal you offer your very self. We give thanks for these gifts of the earth. And the breaking of this bread revealed to us the risen one. And the pouring of this wine to pour us out in service to the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. You are indeed holy, almighty, and merciful God. You are most holy and great is the majesty of your glory. You so loved the world that you gave your only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took the bread broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then again, after supper, he took the cup, blessed it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and drink. This cup is the new covenant shed in my blood for you and all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering, therefore, his salutary <coughs> command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of his coming again, we give thanks to you, O Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able, we ask you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving, and with your word and Holy Spirit to bless us, your servants, and these your own gifts of bread and wine, so that we and all who share in the body and blood of Christ may be filled with heavenly blessing and grace, and receiving the forgiveness of sin, may be formed to live as your holy people, and be given our inheritance with all your saints. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your holy church, now and forever. Amen. Gathered together as one by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us the day of our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And may us not be to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The table is set, all is ready, all are welcome. Please be seated.
those who are worshiping with us from home, this is the body and blood of Christ given and shed for you. I invite you to please rise as you are able. <coughs> now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Gracious God, in you we live and move and have our being. With your word and this meal of grace, you have nourished our life together. Strengthen us to show your love and serve the world in Jesus' name. Amen. As we go now from this time of worship, let us go and say we have seen the Lord. And helping us to proclaim him along the way, God sends us with this blessing. The God of all, who raised Jesus from the dead, bless you by the power of the Holy Spirit to live in the new creation. Amen. Amen. We remain standing as we sing our sending hymn, number 635. <laughs> 